Thank you very much for visiting my channel. If not difficult, like and subscribe to my channel to always be aware of events. Thank. That miss in June shouldn't weigh quite so heavily on John McGinn anymore. Not after this. Just as it seemed Scotland might not gain just rewards. The midfielder's personal moment of redemption helped crown a superb team performance, one utterly transformed from the limp loss to Ukraine in the World Cup playoff semi-final. McGinn has admitted being haunted by his failure to convert from close range in the second half back then, when hope of Qatar drifted away. If that was a moment of utter agony, here was one of sheer bliss. Fittingly, it transpired at the very same end of Hampden. After Kieran Tierney's challenge forced the ball in his direction, McGinn used the most effective backside in international football to roll away from Valerie Bondar. This time, the finish was unerring. Arrowed into the bottom corner of the net. It delivered a 70th minute breakthrough following a succession of thwarted opportunities. Stuart Armstrong had three alone amid the one-way traffic of the second period. Steve Clark faced plentiful criticism after the Ukrainians outclassed their hosts three months ago. The boss got everything right to send Scotland surging to the top of Nations League Group B1. It was one of the finest displays in his tenure. An exhibition of the talent within this squad. A change of system away from a back three, enabled Scotland to flourish. And Clark's substitutions were perfect. Ryan Fraser and Lyndon Dykes were introduced to wrap up the match. They did so in style. Twice in the last ten minutes, Fraser delivered corners for Dykes to head home. For the Newcastle winger, this was quite a cameo on his return to the international fold. For Dykes. It was an emphatic way to end a run of just one goal in 24 appearances with club and country. Scotland have it in their hands now. A win over the Republic of Ireland on Saturday evening would leave just a draw being required against Ukraine in Poland next Tuesday. Play like this again and it is eminently possible to secure Nations League promotion and a backup playoff option for Euro 2024. After all the dismay in June, optimism breathes again. Ukraine left looking somewhat stunned. Speaking at the pre-match media conference, Captain Andriy Yarmolenko had stressed the desire to win for their suffering compatriots remained every bit as strong. Once again, each visiting player emerged from the Hampton Tunnel draped in their national flag. Coach Oleksandr Petrikov was missing a few options through injury, most notably Oleksandr Zinchenko. Outstanding in the playoff win, the versatile Arsenal man is sidelined by a calf injury. For Scotland, Tierney's return in place of the injured Andy Robertson was one of six changes in personnel made by Clark from the last meeting. The formation was altered, too. Scott McTominay was deployed in midfield, rather than centre-back, as part of a 4-2-3-1 setup. Clark was clearly cognizant of the lessons from June. A back four with Jack Hendry and Scott McKenna as its central components still had to show resilience against talented opponents. Once the game got underway, after a minute's applause for the late queen that generated some booing within the Hampton crowd, Ukraine caused some early alarm when Artem Dove BYK was suddenly sprung into a one-on-one -on -one against Hendry. A past scorer on this ground, the knee pro forward couldn't capitalize. That little scare stirred Scotland. For most of the first half, Clark's side were on the front foot. Ukraine were unable to play around him as happened before. 